Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Thatcher, and I am founder and director of Eucharistic Apostles of the Divine Mercy, a lay ministry of the Marian Fathers based in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. That is the location of the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. Our mission as Eucharistic Apostles is to spread the mercy of God primarily through our prayer groups or prayer cenacles, encourage recitation of the Divine Mercy Chaplet for the sick and the dying, we promote the beauty and the gift of all human life and encourage members to do works of mercy to help build up the local church. Our website is www.thedivinemercy.org forward slash EADM and our toll free number in Tampa, Florida is 1-877-380-0727. In this series, The Message of Divine Mercy and the Healing of Addictions, I will discuss in this first talk the history of Alcoholics Anonymous and the 12-step program and go through the steps as we traverse the series and how they relate to the message of divine mercy and church teaching. As we begin this series, let us ask Jesus and His Blessed Mother and all the saints to give you strength as you pick up your cross and walk your own Via Dolorosa. And remember, as Scripture tells us, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This first show will deal with the history of AA and its relationship to the message of divine mercy. It seems that everywhere I traveled and spoke, people would come up to me and ask for prayer because of a loved one who suffers from the ravages of addiction of one sort or another. It is a much more common problem than we really can ever imagine. And I was shocked to hear of so many people with an addiction and how they think that they are undeserving of God's mercy. And yet, it is precisely that the Lord came for those people, as he told St. Faustina in her spiritual diary, the greater the sinner, the greater the right to my mercy. But the poor soul must take the first step and ask for his mercy. The ABCs of mercy, A, ask for his mercy, B, be merciful to others, and C, completely trust in his mercy. God gives us a free will and will never force his love and mercy upon us. Addictions are different and unique from the concept of a typical disease that I saw as a medical doctor in that the problem does not manifest itself until one actually partakes. That is, one does not become an alcoholic until they start drinking. This is totally different from high blood pressure or cancer or heart disease and not supported by any scientific studies, I must admit, I have often wondered in the past if these addictions are due in large part to a learned habit forming response to a stressful stimulus. We are creatures of habits and habits are difficult to break. We resort over and over to ways of coping that we have learned, even if they're ineffective. We are all broken and seem to affirm the notion and statement that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. The founders of AA, Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith, were two alcoholics who had struggled for years trying to maintain their abstinence. Alcoholics Anonymous had its roots in Akron, Ohio, 
where Dr. Smith was a surgeon. Bill Wilson was a stockbroker from New York who also struggled and when the two met they realized that there was much in common because of their problem. They helped each other achieve sobriety. They took their path to being sober very serious and recognized things along the way that helped them in their recovery. But a key link in the spirituality aspect of the program was aided by a nun, Sister Ignatia, who was a nun and administrator of St. Thomas Hospital in Akron, who admitted, admitted alcoholics for medical and spiritual healing. The 12-step program that they developed speaks of a higher power. That is because people enter the program with a variety of different various beliefs in God. But we know that the ultimate higher power is Jesus Christ. And by either walking through the 12 steps or following the message of divine mercy, you will find healing and spiritual strength and growth. There are two goals for this series. The first is that people understand that Jesus is the higher power. It is true that as many walk the path to recovery, they eventually realize this, but I hope that many will achieve and realize this much earlier in the journey. The second is that many will come to better understand on a personal basis the great mercy of God. They will come to know Jesus for who he is, love and mercy itself. So many go through life thinking that God could never love them and that their sins are unforgivable. This distorted thinking causes them to live, live in a world of guilt and shame. Nothing could be farther from the truth. And again, remember, Jesus said, I am love and mercy itself, and the greater the sinner, the greater the right to my mercy from the diary of St. Faustina that she wrote as the Lord told her to do to write down what he told her. The first three steps in the 12-step program deal with this higher power and steps four through seven deal with more personal inner healing and a look at one's inner life and where they're at spiritually. And the last five steps deals with more of a stepping out as they continue this healing and maintaining health and these are external manifestations of the healing that will be and is taking place. Once you understand the mercy of God, you cannot contain it and you'll want to share it with others. They're like the rays of blood and water emanating from his pierced heart in the image of divine mercy. They're reaching out, they're going out to others. And these last steps require one to reconcile, heal, and then share this message with others. In other words, it's spreading the good news. I'd been told in the past that there was a connection somewhere between Alcoholics Anonymous and Catholicism. In my preliminary views, I found nothing to support this notion. Neither of the founders were Catholic, but a couple of years ago my wife showed me the September 2017 Magnificat. And in September, the story was on Sister Ignatia Gavin, who lived from 1889 to 1966. It referenced a book by Mary Dara titled Sister Ignatia, Angel of Alcoholics Anonymous. I ordered and read the book and found the connection I was looking for. I believe Sister Ignatia was the key link that bridged the spirituality and healing that is the fruit of the 12-step program. Della Mary Gavin was born in Ireland and the family immigrated to the United States and settled in Cleveland when she was just a child. In March, in the uh, last century, she entered the convent of the Sisters of Charity of St. Augustine. The basis of the spiritual development of the religious aspirates and nuns were rooted in the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola. They used the Ignatian exercises. He wrote 
back many, many years ago, a simple set of meditations, prayers, and other mental exercises that were per first published in 1548. I believe that spirituality helped guide the two founders as the three of them worked out what worked and what was needed as people progressed and walked the journey to healing. These rules and exercises for spiritual growth center on union with God, frequent reception of the sacraments if you're Catholic, the need for honesty and humility and transparency and not secrecy in our struggles, and of living God's message through works of mercy. The spirituality Sister Learn must have played a role in the growth and writings of her good friend and AA founder, Dr. Bob Smith. Sister Ignatia was known for her musical talents and was transferred to an orphanage where she worked with children. In 1928, she was transferred to the newly opened St. Thomas Hospital in Akron and appointed hospital administrator. The administrator had control of who got admitted, who got discharged, where they were put. So this flexibility allowed her to admit the alcoholics even though she got a lot of grief from the nurses because they felt that the bed should be used for, quote, sick people. And back then they felt that alcoholism was a moral weakness. The years 1928 to 1939 were the formulative years as Dr. Smith and Bill Wilson developed the 12-step program, all with the guidance and support of good friend Sister Ignatia. She saw the suffering and misery that alcoholism caused in the person and also in their loved ones, their spouses and children, and she wanted to help. Interestingly, it was in the late 1920s and 30s, while this 12-step program was being formulated in Ohio, that the Lord was appearing to Sister Faustina initially in 1931 until her death in 1938. So while AA was being developed, Halfway around the world in Poland, the Lord was appearing to Sister Faustina about him being the God of mercy and love. Sister Ignatia convinced Dr. Thomas Scuderi, an emergency room physician, that the alcoholic should be admitted for rest, hydration, and sedation if needed. She wanted to keep him off the street. As I said earlier, she encountered much resistance from the nurses as the prevailing time was that alcoholism was due to a moral weakness. An early admission was a prominent attorney in the area, Bill D., who was picked up on skid row by the police. He was recognized by the police brass and was not jailed, but rather admitted to St. Thomas Hospital. He was just one of thousands who achieved sobriety through the assistance of the 12-step program and Sister Ignatia. Now, Dr. Bob Smith was a physician who had been kicked off of hospital staff because of his alcoholism. He applied to St. Thomas Hospital and became good friends with Sister. In 1930, when Dr. Smith and Bill Wilson were still drinking, writer and philosopher William Montague wrote a book on God and religion called Prometheus Bound. In it, he wrote that Prometheus God was life-affirming and not life negating. In it he wrote a belief that there's a power greater than the self that makes for good. This notion is a key tenet in the 12-step program. The early years as the leaders formulated their plan for sobriety led to an association with the Oxford group. This group was an evangelical movement in the 20s and 1930s that stressed honesty, confessing one's sins to another, selfless living, and always trying to make amends for behavior. However, what this group offered was not enough for doctors to uh, achieve and maintain his sobriety. But the virtues it espoused were certainly helpful as he continued his path. They had also identified other aids which helped them in their path, such as a reading of scripture, attending meetings, affiliation with a church, and daily prayer. But due to concerns of the religious affiliation with the Oxford group, Dr. Bob eventually decided to become an independent group with no religious affiliation. 
as you know well, alcoholism and all addictions favor no religion or level of education or income. In addition to Sister Ignatius' influence on the spiritual program, her friend and Jesuit priest, John Ford, also contributed to the field. He worked with Dr. Silkworth at the New York Towns Hospital with alcoholics and was also a theologian at the Yale School of Alcohol Studies. So the foundation of AA had been laid and they began to document their observations and lay down guidelines and steps to help keep them sober. From this period of deep introspection into their struggles, they put together a self-help program that has helped millions recover their lives and gain their inner peace through, through surrender to what they called a higher power. Realizing that for many the term Jesus Christ might be a turnoff or foreign, they coined the term higher power as the reason and beneficiary of their trust and ongoing healing. The program is not magical or mystical and is not affiliated with any religion, but uses the higher power to describe the need for a higher source for strength and the realization that they and alcohol are not the center of the universe. Over the years, those struggling with various forms of addictions have also applied this 12-step program to their own unique problems, Narcotics Anonymous, gambling, Gamblers Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous, and more. In the early years, Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob wrote six guiding principles that help guide them in their journey to sobriety. In these initial six, you can begin to see the development of the 12 steps. The six included a need to admit powerlessness over alcohol, need for honesty and awareness of the problem, the need to share with others, the need to make amends to those that one is harmed, the need to reach out to others with the problem, and the need to seek spiritual strength from God to achieve the goal of sobriety. How does one even know if one has an addiction? One guide is that an addict or alcoholic continues to use in spite of serious consequences. One will continue to drink after several arrests for drunken driving, loss of a job, or broken marriage. Unfortunately for many, it takes such a serious problem or the hitting of a bottom before they seek help. In 1939, Bill Wilson wrote a book outlining and discussing all the principles he had learned during his journey as an alcoholic. Alcoholics often speak of this book as the big book. The program of AA has since been adapted and have helped millions of people with various issues and problems. Another thing that rarely gets mentioned is the role that the wives of these alcoholic founders and Sister Ignatia played in helping each other and their families. And this really was the start of Al-Anon and the support groups because they needed to talk and get together and discuss all their problems and seek advice from each other because they've all been walking the same walk together. There's a lot of exciting research being done on addictions. A couple of years ago I read an article about um, electromagnetic waves being used to stimulate an area in the brain that helps inhibit certain bad behaviors that is really asleep in addicts. Of course we know of the pleasure center where if you do well with something you kind of get a reward from the brain but it's been shown on scans that cocaine and opioids and other drugs light up this pleasure center and they're working with ways to block and decrease this response. So there's many things going on, but when I looked at what the Lord was telling St. Faustina and what Dr. Bob and Bill Smith were finding in their own walk, the real answers to our problems lie in finding God and living and leading a sacramental life as Catholics with prayer. We have to be totally honest. As we develop the virtues, the vices will gradually diminish. We place our trust in Jesus Christ, the ultimate higher power. That's why below the image, Jesus wanted the words, Jesus, I trust in you. He has to be the anchor when we go to when we're struggling. He has to be the one we rely on when 
we need help, not search for our buddy, the drug or the alcohol or whatever. He must be the anchor in our lives. So in this first talk of this multi-part series, I've given you a brief history of the Alcoholics Anonymous history, the role of Sister Ignatia, and I hope you can see the correlation with the message of Divine Mercy that calls us really to place our total dependence on God, to prayer, to stay close to God, to live and lead a sacramental life, because that will keep us on the straight and narrow path. So thank you so much for joining me in this first series on the history of AA. I hope you will join us next time when we delve into step one. I have a problem and am powerless over it. I hope to see you then. God bless you.